This is a mini lecture for the female reproductive system. And we'll just start by going through some of the uh, major components of the reproductive system for females. Um, the major internal organs are the two ovaries, which are almond-shaped glands, the fallopian tubes or uterine tubes, which extend out from the uterus towards each of the ovaries, the uterus itself, and the vagina or vaginal canal. External genitalia includes the two sets of labia, the clitoris and the mons pubis. The perineum is the area between the thighs that contains the external genitalia. Um, and main functions of the female reproductive system include the production of ova, which are the female sex cells. They're basically the equivalent to what sperm are for males. Also to um, help nourish a developing embryo and fetus if fertilization does occur, and also production of the female sex hormones, such as estrogen. And these hormones help to regulate the reproductive cycle and promote development of secondary sex characteristics during puberty. So a little bit more about the internal structures the ovaries, as I mentioned, are um, oval or almond-shaped glands on either side of the uterus. And these ovaries contain many follicles. The follicles um, contain the ova or the, the eggs. Ovulation is when one single ovum is released from an ovary. And fertilization can occur at this point if there are sperm present in the reproductive tract, usually Fertilization happens somewhere along the fallopian tube. If no sperm are present, then the ovum will eventually be excreted from the body. The fallopian tubes extend laterally from each side of the uterus, and they go out towards each of the ovaries. And these carry the ovulated ovum towards the uterus. So when ovulation occurs, the ovum moves into the fallopian tube and gradually travels through that to get into the uterus. The uterus itself, shown right here, is a hollow muscular organ that's located behind the bladder and it's slightly above the bladder as well. This is the location for implantation. Um, so that means it's where the fertilized egg will implant itself and ultimately develop into a fetus. The endometrium is the inner lining of the uterus, which is shed each month during menstruation if there is not a fertilized egg present. And the cervix is located down here. It's the lowest portion of the uterus that contains an opening into the vagina. The vagina itself is a muscular canal that extends from the cervix to the outside of the body. This serves as the birth canal, um, it also receives semen, which includes sperm during sexual intercourse. This is also the passageway um, for menstruation. And then the external genitalia, as I mentioned, includes both sets of labia, minora and majora, which are the folds of skin on either side of the vaginal opening. The clitoris is at the anterior junction of the labia. It's a, a mass of tissue. And the mons pubis up here is um, basically a, a sort of a pad of adipose tissue that cushions the pubic symphysis, which is located underneath of it. The mammary glands located in the breast, they secrete milk to nourish a newborn throughout the process of lactation. And the lactiferous duct drains milk from the mammary glands and carries it to the nipple. The menstrual cycle lasts approximately 28 days and it consists of several phases during which the endometrium, which is the lining of the uterus, undergoes changes due to the secretion of sex hormones. The term menses is the discharge of the endometrium. So it's not only the um, tissue that the endometrium is composed of, but also blood and mucus. 
and that is excreted through the vagina, through the vaginal canal. Um, so that is the first, that occurs in the first few days of the menstrual cycle. Then ovulation occurs in the middle of the cycle, usually around day 14. And the term menarche is onset of menstruation, which usually begins around the age of um, 12 to 13. Menopause is the cessation of menstruation and ovarian activity. And pregnancy, also known as the gestation period, lasts approximately nine months. And just a few terms related to that. Parturition is the term for childbirth. And there are two terms related to the developing baby, the embryo and fetus. So embryo is what it's referred to during the first three months of development. And then it's referred to as a fetus from the third month to the time of birth. So um, the next section here, we will talk about some diseases and conditions related to the female reproductive system. And we'll start with some of the menstrual disorders. There's just two listed here. Um, dysmenorrhea, remember DYS means difficult or painful when you see that prefix. So this means painful menstruation. Um, and then menorrhagia or hypermenorrhea. This is excessive bleeding during menstruation. The next term here is endometriosis, and that's um, what is pictured here on the diagram. This is the presence of endometrial tissue outside of the uterus. And on here, they're showing you the various places where it can grow abnormally, so in the, the dark red color. Normally, the endometrium should only be inside the uterus. It's the inner lining. Um, but in this case, it's growing outside the uterus, outside of the fallopian tubes, outside of the ovaries. And you'll have bleeding in these locations when menstruation occurs. It can be very painful. Pelvic inflammatory disease is inflammation of the uterus, fallopian tubes, as well as other pelvic structures. Often the cause is an infection or an STD and it can lead to scarring in the reproductive tract, which can actually um, make it difficult to get pregnant. Um, as far as oncology, two types of cancers that we'll discuss here. Breast cancer is um, when there's carcinoma in the breast tissue. This is the most common type of cancer among women in the United States. And then cervical cancer is carcinoma of the cervix. And this is frequently associated with infections um, due to sexual activity. And this is, it, it can be detected early as long as you're going for regular um, gynecological visits and getting the pap tests. Okay, so some other diseases and conditions. The term retroversion means when an organ is turned backward from its normal position. In this case, it is with regard to the uterus. So here's the normal position where it's kind of bent forward, but if during retroversion, it is actually bent the opposite way. It's turned or tipped backward. Sterility is the inability to reproduce or become pregnant. Uterine fibroids are benign tumors that develop in the uterus. And then the next few conditions are related to pregnancy. A breech presentation is an inverted presentation during delivery. So that's when the baby's feet or buttocks are um, present first. So they are the closest to the cervix rather than the head. Um, so the baby is, is not head down, which is what's desired during childbirth. Toxemia is pregnancy-induced hypertension. And eclampsia is the most severe form of toxemia during pregnancy. An ectopic pregnancy is when the fertilized ovum becomes implanted in an abnormal location. 
Remember, normal implantation should be in the body of the uterus. This is when it implants itself in a location other than that. You can see on this diagram the various other locations where implantation could happen. Um, it can happen in the ovary along the uterine tube. It can happen um, in the ligaments or membranes that are actually outside of the uterus or down in the cervix. Placenta previa is a condition where the placenta attaches too close to the cervix, which results in bleeding during labor. And finally, some medical and surgical procedures. A cesarean section, often just called a C-section, is the incision of the abdomen and uterus to remove a fetus, to remove a baby. Cryosurgery is freezing tissue to destroy cells. And this is often used to treat chronic cervical infections. Dilation and curettage, that is shown here. These are the, the various steps, first dilation and then curettage on this picture. Um, this is the widening of the cervix and then scraping of the uterine wall with a curette. A hysterectomy is excision of the uterus. Laparoscopy is a visual examination of the abdominal cavity using a laparoscope through a small incision in the abdominal cavity. And that is what's being shown right here on this diagram. A lumpectomy is the excision of a tumor or lump and some of the surrounding tissue. And a mastectomy is excision of an entire breast. And finally, diagnostic tests. An amniocentesis is the puncture of the amniotic sac, which is the sac that surrounds a developing fetus, using a needle to remove amniotic fluid. And this is done for testing. Um, to determine if the, the fetus is developing normally and genetically it's normal. Chorionic villus sampling is sampling of placental tissue in order to diagnose potential genetic defects in a fetus. A colposcopy is a visual examination of the vagina and cervix. And um, the diagnostic test shown here, uh, this is a lab test, is the pap test. It's a cellular study used to detect abnormal cells of either the cervix or the vagina. And other testing involves imaging techniques. Mammography is a radio radiographic examination of the breast. And ultrasonography is when sound waves are used to produce an image of an internal body structure. And if we're discussing the female reproductive system, in this case, it's often to have an image of the developing embryo or fetus. And finally, pharmacology. Estrogens are used for hormone replacement therapy to treat the symptoms of menopause. Prostaglandins terminate pregnancy. Oral contraceptives are hormones that are used to prevent pregnancy. And oxytocics induce labor by increasing the strength and frequency of uterine contractions.